document your journey. The way that this direction, this world is going in, especially right now in 2019, and it's never been a better time to build a personal brand. I'm Zach Hall, and this is The Mindset Movement. All right, guys, we got Justin Saunders here with us today. Guy I've been following for a very, very long time, a big influence on myself when I started my digital marketing agency before I kind of shifted over to what I'm doing now. But Justin Saunders, man, he helps entrepreneurs get to that six-figure mark, get their businesses up and rocking, very, very successful with it. Just an overall very smart dude when it comes to digital marketing. But I'm very excited to have him on the show here today. Justin, thanks for coming on, man. I really, really appreciate it. This is a show we've had scheduled for a while, and I've been looking forward to getting you on here um, for quite some time, man. Yeah, no problem at all, Zach. Happy to be here, my man. Oh, good. Good stuff. Good stuff. And I guess going back to the introduction there, like you're saying, you have it on like a lot of stuff. I see you branding yourself with with that with that slogan that you help entrepreneurs um, get to that six figure mark. So, like, what is it you do for them to help them get there? Well, there's quite a bit of, there's a couple of different things, you know, I mean, one of the main things that we've noticed when it comes to entrepreneurs, so they're, you're either in the beginning phase or you're in the scaling phase, right? Yeah. In the very broad aspect. And we have a couple of different brands that associate with each one. So for example, the beginners, you know, most of them, everybody that sees all of these, um, influencers like ourselves over here, living the life, traveling the world, doing kind of what we want. They just jump into it and they think, oh, SMA, if I can learn Facebook ads, Instagram ads, I'm going to be successful. And you know that's not the case when it comes to this. The main skill that beginning entrepreneurs lack in the SMA space is simply sales. And I've been fortunate enough to, you know, learn from some some really good experts in the sales field, um, as well as invest a lot of my money into learning more sales materials, strategies, techniques. And that's one of the things that we help a lot of beginning entrepreneurs out with is simply just understanding sales, how to close the deal, how to prospect, and more importantly, just how to build a big pipeline. Because you know, in this space, if you don't have a pipeline, you're not going to have any clients. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Sales is a big part of it. You see a lot of people lack that. And what's kind of funny is you see so many starting out entrepreneurs, they'll come from some sort of sales background, usually like retail sales. Um, my case, it was I was selling cars at a dealership and I did very, very well. And uh, I came into this space thinking like I was the greatest salesman in the world, just like every single other not starting out entrepreneur thinks. But uh, reality kind of hits, you get punched in the face there and you realize that you're nothing, right? I wasn't as good as a salesman as I thought, despite the fact that I was selling cars and I was doing good, right? So a big key to that when, when you're starting off um, with your own business and, and the sales part, I think a big thing is, is that you, people aren't talking to enough people, right? When it comes to closing down sales, nobody's talking to enough people, right? They're not knocking on enough doors. They're not making enough calls, Um when it, when it comes to that, like with the whole sales part of your agency, uh, how many times do you have to actually contact somebody before they actually consider buying from you or, or buying into your service? That's a great question, man. And it always depends on, you know, I get asked that question all the time. It always depends on your niche, what you offer, what your specialties are. But kind of just to give you a little understanding about what we do, you know, my agency we're, we're, we're hiring right now as well. So we have employees out there who are doing the prospecting for us. Now I realize that if you want to scale an agency, you can't be doing all the prospecting. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want people that are watching this to get confused with thinking, well, Hey, I just started an agency. I'm not going to do the prospect or anything like that, which that's complete wrong. That's, that's wrong. You need to do all the bitch work up front. But when you start scaling, like in the position that we're in right now, you need to start hiring. And the one kind of to answer your question there, man, uh, we are getting, you know, thousands of touches out per day. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you're, when you're doing this by yourself, it's easy to go and like, you know, maybe knock on a couple of doors or slide in DMs a couple of times, you know, maybe like 50 to a hundred touches per day is considered good if you're doing that by yourself. But when you're getting to the point where you're scaling, like kind of where we're at, you need to get those numbers up. And kind of going on with all what you were saying there, if you want to get closed deals, you have to have big numbers. So we're pushing anywhere from, I don't know, maybe I'd say it's around 5,000 touch points per week, which 
I'm kind of wanting, I'm wanting to scale that more. We're bringing on another employee right now. So we're looking to double those numbers. And the goal is each month, double those numbers. So, you know, to answer your question in a nutshell, man, anybody that's looking to get closed deals or more appointments set, it all starts in the back end. How big is your pipeline? If you're only getting 10 to 20 to 100 touches per day, you're going to have a very slow road getting to the bigger numbers. Right, right. Those are rookie numbers. We got to pump them up, right? Yeah, pump them, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I myself, I call and talk to the same person at least three times a day. You give the reference I'm getting at there, but this is a family show, so we got to keep it PG. Jordan Belfort reference, Wolf of Wall Street, right? <laughs> but like, dude, I don't. Absolutely. I've been watching you kill it, man. I've actually plugged you a couple times. I don't think I've even told you this, but I've I've plugged you um, for your specialty skill there and like what you do for. Um, I'll, I'll let you talk about it, but the businesses that you specifically work for, I've plugged you here recently. Uh, but explain to everybody what you do and why being niche specific is important. Um, if you think that it is important. Um, in, in your own opinion there. So it, for th that's a two-part question. Is niche specific important when you're running a marketing agency like you're doing there? And uh, what is your specialty? Great question. So yes, to answer your question, being in a niche is very specific. Now, if you're just getting started, I, I recommend picking a niche. It doesn't have to be the niche that you go into, exactly. but try out a different couple of different things. Me specifically, I, we work with chiropractors and the whole reason we got into chiropractors <laughs> is mostly because of my ego. Simply when I first got started, everybody was telling me that, you know, the chiropractic niche is oversaturated. You're never going to make any noise. You're never going to get any clients, blah, 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 all this bullshit. Right. And me, I'm a very, I have a very big ego, right? When someone tells me I can't do something, the first thing I think is how, how do I do this? So that's why we got into the chiropractic space. I think it's a great idea to be very niche specific simply because when you're first starting out, you can be in a couple of different places. You know, I tried restaurants, dentists and all that. You know, I've, I've done, I've ran quite a bit of ads and yeah. when kind of going to setting yourself up for a better future, if you want to scale properly, you need to be niche specific. So um, what I, I hope that answers that no, first right. question. You're, what, you're absolutely what was the right second there. one? Um, like, Obviously, like you said, they're like, is niche specific important? And and again, same answer. I would I would say the exact same thing. Um, the second part there is like, what is what is your niche? Like, what what are you specifically good at? Like, what what's your main thing? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, we work specifically with chiropractors, and the whole thing that kind of sets you, the whole when when it comes to being a niche, anyone can niche down, right? right. But you got to figure out something that sets yourself apart from everybody else. So like. For our Kairos, you know, I'm sure you probably heard it. Everybody guarantees 30 leads and stuff like that. But we actually <laughs> guarantee with our Kairos a booked pain patient. So that's kind of something that sets us apart from everybody else is when Kyra, we talk to Kairos like, well, you know, we actually guarantee that you're going to get a patient in the door. You know, we're not, we're going to bring you 30 leads. There's no doubt about that. But we're also going to book, we're actually going to guarantee that a patient comes in and pays you cash as well. So they see some sort of ROI. No, yep. That's uh, I, I've been watching your results and everything. What you're putting on Facebook and you're in your Facebook group, your page, Instagram, whatever. Like you actually do it, man. Like this, this show here isn't for the guys that talk about it. This is the show. This is a show for the people who actually do it. Right. That's why I wanted you on here. I made a lot of points of contact to get people on the show here, but I only get people on the show who are actually truly out there winning, um, not just talking about it. Because everybody talks about it, but not everybody's actually doing it. Right. Um, you're actually somebody where I see you putting stuff on there on a daily basis, proving the fact that you're getting not just 30 leads for people. You're actually getting more than 30 leads for people, but you keep it a conservative number and say 30. That's that's good. That's good. Um, OK, now this is going to be a good one here because this this is something I never got to your level. Right. Because I ran the marketing agency, but I never got exactly where you're at right now. But like how long did it take for you to start actually winning in this space? That's a tricky question, man, because it's, it's, it's interesting how you, when you say winning, it, what does winning mean? Because for me, there's always another level, always. right? Yep. I've never, I don't think I've ever win this because just simply because I see, you know, like, let's say I go sign 10 Cairo clients, right? Well, I'll see somebody else go and sign 20. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, 
I won, I guess I technically won this level, right? But how do I get to that next level? And that's something that we talk. I talk a lot about on my uh, like Instagram, um, YouTube videos, and things like that. Is always achieving, going to that next level. So to answer your question, how do I win? I guess how do I complete each level in a way? I would say, you know, it takes time. Obviously, you know, when I first got started with this, and we had this conversation before we first got on this call, is you know, shiny object syndrome is real. I chase things, you know, I tried Forex, I tried real estate. I did Shopify drop shop shipping for a little. I used to build stores up to like, uh, I forget what it was like 5k or something and sell them 20k and then sell them for 5k, whatever it was. Yeah. But to get to the next level, it's hard to answer that question because there's always another level, right? You know, I guess in, in an easy way to answer your question, how I started first seeing success in this would be, I failed multiple, multiple times, right? The first chiropractor I actually signed, it was pretty embarrassing because <laughs> I signed them for $1,500, you know, because I knew sales. I was like, okay, well, I can go out there and I can sign a deal. But I didn't know how to get them results because getting chiro results is a little bit different than, you know, scaling an e-commerce store or something like yeah. that, right? Yep. So I was dumb. I used that money and went out there and bought like a brand new TV <laughs> and just, you know, ate some fancy food. I really like spending money on food, by the way. If you follow me on Instagram, you see and I protein. Do that all the time. And protein. Um, yeah. And pro, dude, you got to have the protein, man. You got to get the gains. <laughs> but anyways, man, when at that time it was like, well, I was just ignorant, you know, and I took some time off and got back into it. And I was able to sign five clients in 10 days strictly just because I kind of revisited everything I was doing. I was like, okay, well, that's not working. This is working. And the way I was able to sign those five clients is because I built a big pipeline. Yep. And I think that's a thing that like a lot of people resonate with when it first they love hearing like me talk about this is when I first get started is building that big pipeline. So you can have, you know, those five clients in 10 days, because I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I, yeah, I got five clients in 10 days, but there's all that back end work that, you know, most people don't talk about, especially influencers. They only show you the good stuff. They don't tell you really what happens in the back end of all the work, all the hours, all the behind the scene footage of what really gets you to where you're at. Yeah, no, exactly. Nobody talks about that because it's not attractive, right? Because a lot of people think like if you can sell somebody on your, your course or whatever, you can't talk about the bad. But realistically, the way that I think, like if I'm seeing somebody selling like their course or whatever, and they're not talking about the bad, then it's probably not as good as I, I think. And like they probably don't have a good enough mindset to actually teach me what I think that they're going to or what they're at least advertising. Like, like in my opinion, I would almost rather see people talk about the bad rather than the good. Um, but like I said, it's just, it's just not attractive. Nobody wants to talk about that. Everybody just wants to only talk about the good stuff, right? But when I'm talking about winning, um, I guess you, you could take that question a bunch of different approaches. Like, uh, I guess the way I was intending it was maybe like, when did you actually start to like get sales and consistency and actually stop losing money? Um, it's funny when I started my agency, like I was pissed off and I had a burning passion to, like you said, when, when people doubt you and say that you're not gonna be able to do it, same thing. I have a burning passion to completely flip that person off, like put my finger right in their face and tell them to fuck off. Like that was my mentality too, when I first started. And it only took me until the third person that I walked into, I was doing car dealerships. The third, the third business that I walked into, which was in within an hour and a half, I signed them up thousand dollar a month contract. Um, similar story to you I had literally no idea what I was doing. Um, actually when I was doing that, that kind of marketing back then, I was, wasn't even using Facebook business manager. I was using the, pr the promote button, the blue boost button on the front end. Like, dude, I was, it, <laughs> oh, no. dude, it was miserable. <laughs> it was miserable. It was miserable. But this was before, um, one of the big Facebook algorithm changes. So we still were somehow getting results. I don't know how, but we were still getting results. But, uh, you know, for, in my case, it didn't take very long to start winning. Um, but kind of what happens in, in literally anything you do, um, we'll go back to that reference, getting punched in the face. I got hit really, really hard, like a month or two after that. And uh, I, ironically, like I, I talk about it sometimes, but it ended up landing me on that Judge Judy show, long story short. But uh, we, uh, we got hit really, really hard. Uh, my business partner, he'd never seen money before in his life. So we got very, very greedy because we scaled up to like eight, nine or 10 clients or something like that. So we had some decent money coming in off the bat. He got greedy, stole a lot from me. 
ended up on that. Like, and I got hit hard, failed really, really, really badly. And I, and I always talk about those pivotal moments in, in like entrepreneurship where um, you're going to get knocked down and, and literally the winners in this world are just the people who keep going. Like if it just, all you got to do is keep going. If you want to be a winner or, and successful and you want to like be at the top of your game and, and anything, just literally don't quit. That's literally all it takes because as soon as you quit, you're guaranteed failure, right? But if you keep going, you're going to be guaranteed success because eventually you're going to hit a streak where you succeed a bunch of times over again and your success is going to offset your losses, right? Time and money wise. Okay. So I think that's huge, bro. And I think that's a huge message that so many people need to hear is because most people, you know, I'm kind of referring to the beginners on this. When you first jump into entrepreneurship, whether it's SMA, e-commerce, affiliate marketing, Forex, real estate, whatever that, whatever the hell it is that you're doing, most people want to see instantaneous results. And when they don't, they get pissed and quit. Yep. And that is the biggest issue with anyone that's wanting to see results with this. So kind of like what you said, and anybody that's listening on here, if you're at not, if you're not at the point where you want to be right now, just know each day. It's called like the compound effect. If you just do one thing every single day, that stuff compounds and compounds and compounds. And me and my roommate were just talking about this. Like, it's crazy. Like, even just where we were this time last year, like, it's crazy how fast results get up and how fast you your lifestyle will change. Yeah. So if you're at that point right now, just remember, stay focused. Look long term. Just do one thing, get one percent better each and every day. Yeah. You know, another thing with focus there. And again, this podcast is pretty much just a ramble free for all. Like I'm trying to be trying to be the M and M of podcasts here, right? Like I don't want to script out a full show. We're just gonna freestyle it, right? When it comes to like the focus, oh, can we get some like Slim Shady going on in the background or something? Probably could. Rap I probably, probably could. <laughs> See if my editor can put that in there. <laughs> you know, throw that in for us. Um, but when it comes to like the focus and everything, like I used to think like it was only me that had problems with focusing. And 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 when it comes to like you not being able to focus, like long story short, it's just you're procrastinating. Like you're pushing off the important stuff to do literally stuff that doesn't matter at all. Um, but but a lot of your focus, it doesn't start necessarily up here, and, and some of it does. But it starts down here. It starts with what you're actually eating, dude. Like if you're going to go to McDonald's every single day, like you're going to get out um, like what you're putting into yourself. Like if you're putting complete crap into your body, of course, you're not going to have a clear mind. You're not going to be able to focus. You're not going to be able to do the important stuff. Like a lot of like your success, like I've been starting to realize starts with what you're putting into yourself. Um, again, the show's yeah. called the mindset yeah. movement. And that's the other half of it. But like if you're putting crap in, dude, you're going to get crap out. It's just the way it's going to work. But, uh, Dude, and how they say like how you do one thing is how you do everything is the most accurate statement in the world. Like if you're going to be the type of person that's going to eat like shit and go eat McDonald's five days a week, well, guess what? You're going to treat your business like that as well. So if you want to change and just ch check your life, if you're doing the tiny little things, like let's say, for example, you go to the gym and instead of doing... 12 reps, like, you know, you should, you do five each day. You know I mean? Obviously that's still going to help you out, but treat your life, treat your business the same. If you know you can do better, you know, do better. Yeah. Okay. What's the best, we can probably be a conversation on this because I had a pretty good way of doing it, but like, what's your best way of actually, and, and this is probably like the key to your whole course and I don't want you to have to give all the value of your course away there, but like, what's the key thing or the key way that you actually lock down clients, right? Your course there or, or your uh, mentorship prospecting like a pro, like what is like your key way of locking down and prospecting clients? Great question, man. My key way is strictly online. And the way I kind of went from this, not to get it too much off topic, but when I first started with all this, I was working for another agency and we were selling print and newspaper ad, or print and digital ads. It's like when digital was first becoming a thing. And what we would do is I would have to go door knocking every single day, cold calling every single day, emailing every single day. 
And I hated, I mean, I, I loved it because I, I'm a, per, I'm a type of person that loves a thrill doing something that's different, yeah. but I also hated every second of it because, you know, when it's 98 degrees outside and you're walking door to door to door for eight hours a day, it sucks. And once I realized that you can just go do this all online, my life changed and it's, it requires so minimal effort. Anybody can do it is the craziest part about it. And that's the main method I teach inside my course, Prospecting Like a Pro, is go and get these clients online. Facebook has never made... It's never been easier to get a client than just sending a DM on Facebook. Right? Easy. Like, and we go over a bunch of specific strategies and techniques where you can go on there and you just you go and build your friend list of, let's say, for example, you're in the dentist industry, you just go add a bunch of dentists and then just go prospect on them, put them in your CRM, follow up with them each and every other day until you either get a yes or no. And instead of going out, hustling your ass off in 98 degree weather, knocking door to door, sweating your ass off, you can just use your keyboard, your, your computer over here and go travel the world while you close deals, kind of like what I do over yeah. here. And live the, live a good life. It's it's never been easier, and people overcomplicate everything about Bro, it. Bro, that's exactly how I did it too. Like when when I was starting off, and even like later into the success into my agency, which I only ran my agency for a little over a year total, um, it ended up being a success. But like I had more passion in like the e-commerce space, and 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 again, like you're saying, like I was doing like a lot of like a lot more work for a lot less pay when I wasn't as passionate about what I was doing. So I switched to e-commerce and uh, literally started making at least a hundred times more than I was previously. And uh, like had a lot more time in my hand, didn't have to deal with all the bullshit. But like, that's what I was doing. Like you're saying, like I was going door to door to door to door, knocking, 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 getting nonstop rejections, which I'm fine with. I don't really, it doesn't really bother me at all. But uh, like, there's such, such a better way to do it. And, and, that's the way to do it right there. Like the big way that I was actually locking down people was because uh, my niche was car dealerships. I would audit their websites or and their Instagrams and their, and their Facebook pages. And I would do a video auditing them. And then I would send that video directly to them. And, and videos are so personable, right? Because everybody's always got that thought in the back of their mind that, Oh, they're just sending out a massive like a uh, message to every single person, every single car dealership, right? So they're like, we're not special to them. That way it actually makes it more personal, more special. And you get such a massive, like, like, like return, like a, a lot of like replies when you do it that way, because it's more personal. Like if, if you want to start an agency, like definitely go get knocked down a few levels, try that approach. Cause you got to learn to fail. Um, and, and, and get past the adversity. Try that. Try that approach where you go from like door to door to door. But ultimately, like switch it up to like a more monetized approach where you're messaging people on Facebook, messaging people on um, Instagram because that's just so much better. It's a better way to do it. But you know, when it when it comes to your automation for your business, there I, I ask a lot of people in the social media space here um, this question because I think it's important because you can completely automate your business if you want to. What's your approach on that? Do you automate 100% or uh, we'll, we'll save it at that. Do you automate 100% why or, or why not? Maybe? I do not automate 100% right now. And the reason is because I kind of, like I said before, I'm always looking for that next level, that next way of bringing in better results. But to answer your question, the majority of my business is automated. And I think the goal is to have it 100% automated because, you know, I'm not, I don't plan on running a social media marketing agency for the rest of my life, right? Like, I like doing this. It's fun. I'm good at it. I'm, I like talking to clients. I like my clients. But my whole goal is, you know, use this because it, Income equals freedom, right? We, we all know that. If you want to have freedom, you have to have money to be free. And social media marketing is great for that. You know, like I have like my, I, for the most part, it's all automated, right? Like whenever I come in here, the sales is automated, the prospects are automated, the uh, fulfillment's automated, everything's automated. But, you know, I'm always working on the business. I just read a book from Michael Gerber um, called The E-Myth. If you haven't read that or anyone on here hasn't read it, highly, highly recommend it. He talks about how to build your business as like you're building a McDonald's franchise, right? And 
the whole concept of this is working on your business, not in your business, having the systems and processes in place. So it works even for you know a dummy or somebody, even a robot, maybe a robot in a couple of years moving forward could do it. So um, I believe in automation 100%, man. Um, right now, just with my agency, it's not uh, it's not 100% automated just because I don't want it to be. Um, very well, it could be. But like I said, always, always, always trying to reach that next level. Right. And that's the point I got to, too. Um, and it's not just agencies. It's pretty much any business you get in. You can, if you wanted to, if you truly wanted to, you can automate it 100% either with manpower or with uh, like AI and, and, and software and stuff. But like, you shouldn't do that. Like I tried that. I went down that path thinking like like the basic entrepreneur things, like when you're first starting off, like... I'm just going to keep creating businesses. And then once I get enough of them, I'm going to be a millionaire, right? I'm going to keep automating them. Like everybody thinks they're really smart thinking that, but realistically, everybody's had that thought. Everybody tries that, but it just doesn't work. So that was my thought process. Um, I automated my businesses, uh, both of them actually. And what happens is you don't see the problems. Okay. When you automate 100%, you're not seeing the problems that are arising. It's like the definition of business. Like I always preach there is, it's nonstop problem solving. So if you're going to separate yourself from them problems, especially it's even worse with AI and software and stuff. If you separate yourself from that business completely, right? hundred percent automated, you're not going to see the problems coming in. So when you don't see the problems coming in, get ready for your business to completely crumble. Um, it's a little bit better if you have like people actually there, like, uh, virtual assistants even, or, or maybe like a manager in place, because that way you can actually have people relay the messages to you, but still, you're not going to be seeing the problems there firsthand. Um, but uh, what was that book you said there? E-Myth? E-Myth from Michael Gerber. It's, um, yeah, dude, it's it's a game changer. It got me inspired. I don't know if you've ever seen the, um, what is it? I don't watch TV like at all. Yeah. Um, but on Netflix, they have, it's called The Founder. Oh, yeah. And it's like the McDonald's documentary type movie. And after reading that book, then watching that, it just, it was just mind blowing to me. It was like, I have to systematize everything. And it's, it's been a game changer. No, that's a good move. Like same thing. I'll watch a little bit of TV, but pretty much where my TV watching just comes in is like, we'll put it out at night to fall asleep to. That's about it. Um, like I watch movies like, like, like the founder and, and, and Wolf of Wall Street and, uh, just stuff like Moneyball, whatever stuff like that, like stuff that I that I like, like entrepreneurship wise. But the yeah. founder, dude, that's a good movie. Um, Ray Kroc, guy's a fucking genius. He's he's, uh, he's, he's, a, he's a hard ass genius, dude. genius, hard ass. But um, dude, that's a good movie. You should probably check that out if you haven't seen that either. But uh, like the guy, he's just got such a winning personality, despite the fact that he's a terrible person. Um, not even the he's, they call it the founder, <laughs> which is so ironic because he's not even the founder of McDonald's, dude. Like the guy stole McDonald's. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> guy completely stole it. Um, like in his, in his mentality, one of the signature quotes he has there in that movie is if my competitor were drowning, I would stick a hose in his mouth and turn the water on. <laughs> but like when it comes to like succeeding, man, like you got, you can't do it on your own. And, and this was one of the takeaways I took from that quote in that movie is like, they preach that you can do it on your own, but you can't. Okay, sticking a hose in, in somebody's mouth and turning on the water isn't the way to deal with your competition. Because if you can deal with your competition by working with them, that's not only better for you, it's better than your, for your competitor, and it's better for everybody else when you can work together rather than compete. That was my mindset, again, for the longest time. Like, I want to get into my space and completely dominate. But one of the things that, that really turned my mindset around and my success was, okay, well, maybe if I didn't eat, if I wasn't such a dick and I started actually like working with my competitors instead of working against them, then it's going to be better overall. And that's exactly what happened. I locked down a partnership with, I think they, I don't think they were number one. I think they were the number two car dealership, uh, like website building place in the world. Uh, like they have like the CRMs for car dealerships. They build their websites, their, their inventory suppliers, marketing forum, everything. Like I actually partnered with them when, when I switched my mindset to that and my competitor was sending me leads <laughs> so uh, what I'm getting at there is it's, it's it's not necessarily that you need to stick the hose in your competitor's mouth and turn the water on and kill them off, right? Um, but maybe try working with them. I don't know what your approach is on that there. Like, obviously, we want to be number one. We got, we got a lot of aggression. We want to be the best. But you can still be the best if you want to, if, when you work with other people. You don't have to completely dominate and kill them, right? But, like, 
What's your approach there with that, man? Do you agree? Like, do you, do you think working with people is better than competing? Well, I mean, I don't plan on drowning anybody, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I think, I think to a T, like, I agree with you. Um, it's always better to kind of figure out ways to work with people. Um, however, I always think in terms of, as Grant Cardone says, you know, there's no such thing as really competitors, right? You're, if you're in a field, you're either going to dominate it or you're just going to be average. Yeah. And I always choose to do the absolute best at what I can do. Um, so, you know, I, I, I believe there's, there's people out there that compete with what we do, but yeah. I always think that, you know, and I, I trust that we have the best service. We have the best thing, the best offers for our clients. And we always do the best. No, right. Yeah, that's that's true. Like another thing with coming into like any of these industries and everything, like people will break down and do the math because they're smart, right? And they think like, man, if I could come into this space and I could just take 1% of the market share, right? If I could come in and take 1% of Amazon's sales, then then I'm loaded. I'm just set for life. I, I don't got to dominate. But like, dude, if your mindset's only coming in and taking such a small fraction, like, bro, you're never going to be successful. You're never going to get there. You got to come in head in the top. Right. And, and it's kind of like a, they combat each other a little bit. Like you gotta be aggressive. You gotta be like a winning mindset. You gotta be out there trying to com compete in a way, like you gotta compete to like win, but like you shouldn't be out there looking to completely destroy other people like, like Ray Kroc did and just completely steal McDonald's. Um, like drowning people. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was going to ask you like, no, uh, but I, I'm with you a hundred percent, man. I mean, when it comes to success, the reason the success for people are that reach success is because they think big. They don't think small. If you go into any field and you think too small, you're going to get small results. And then when you see re small results, you're going to want to quit. You know, it's fun when you see big results. So always got to think big, man. I mean, you, you, you said it yourself. Mindset is key. If you have, and that's why I, I focus so much on mindset, man, because it's, it's one of those things is like, <clears throat> even when you first get started with it, you're like, wow, if I could just get one client, my life would change. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then you get a client, everything's so awesome. And then you're like, you kind of feel the same as you did before you had one client. You're like, well, you know, maybe if I can get five clients, then my life will change. And you keep going <laughs> up that ladder. And it's just every time you reach something else, it's like, well, you know, I, I go back, like whenever you reach, I forget there's some law about it, but it's like, whatever you reach one level, it's like, okay, well, you kind of mentally, you go back to the other level. You're like, okay, well now I'm not as happy as I was yeah. if I thought I would get this. Yeah. So it's, it's a game. Entrepreneurship is a game of obviously like making money, being successful, but, and so many people don't realize this when they're starting out is it's all mindset. If you can master your mind, I'd say that's the number one skill right now yeah. for anybody watching this is you need to master your mindset. It's, if you want to reach, yeah that next level of wherever you're and at. And it's so cliche. It's so cliche to say, everybody says that, but that's literally it. Like that's yeah. the most important part right there. Like when I started out, and I'm sure you probably are the same way. When, when I started out, like, dude, I couldn't get a W to save my life aside from like signing up like the clients, but I couldn't get a W when it, when it came to like getting them results. Like I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing pretty much the entire process that I was running my marketing agency. But I knew just as long as I jumped out into the marketing space, like I'm passionate about what I'm doing, everything will fall into place, right? I walked out there, like I wanted to succeed more than I wanted to breathe. Eric Thomas said that, right? Like, like, like a, a, a guy walks out of the water, the guru shoves his head underwater and, and, and holds him there until the guy nearly drowns. And, and the, the metaphor that he's trying to get at there is he pulls him up and he says, that's what success is. Like that fighting feeling you had when you were getting held underwater, like when you wanted to breathe more than anything else, like in life, when all you wanted to do was breathe, like that's when you're going to be successful. So that's what success is right there. You got to fight and you got to grind, dude. Like you want to see, like you want to breathe more, more than, more than anything else. Right. A little shaky with the words. There, I, that's, I that's love that dude. I, I absolutely love that because I talk about that all the time. I talk about like, Going to ground zero, making yourself at that point where you got to breathe. You got to figure out how you can get there. And, you know, that's something that I I try to tell a lot of my clients to do. I mean, it's it's one of those things that's really, really hard to actually make yourself go to ground zero 
And that's why, I mean, not a lot of people can do it, but when you can force yourself to go to ground zero, and again, everybody has a different ground zero. For me, it was a time when I graduated college. Uh, I cut off all my friends. I'm a very social person. I was social chair of my fraternity. So that was really hard for me to do. Yeah. Me and my girlfriend broke up, had no money to my name, was living in this apartment that like the, the ceiling leaked water. I had, you know, other than my family, I had nothing. And that was my ground zero. So I forced myself to figure out a way to breathe, as you would say. And that one way was through social media marketing, just grinding my ass off, getting clients, figuring out what would work, what wouldn't work. And when you put yourself in a scenario like that, you know, a lot of people don't give their their themselves enough credit because when you go to that as low as you can possibly go, you figure out whether you yeah. can think you can do it right now or not, you you will figure out a way that you will come up for breath. Yeah. And if not, <laughs> then you're screwed. Right. <laughs> because as human beings, that's that's how that's how we're meant to be on this planet. We're meant to be able to figure out ways to get up from the bottom. Right. Don't believe everything you think. Like you see a lot of people before they start off, they, they make excuses like why they can't start. Like they're bro, I can't start. Like I get I can make more money or I can have more time freedom or whatever if I started my own business, but I could never do it because I, I have a house mortgage, I have a car payment. Um, I got all this credit card debt. Yeah. Like, bro, I'm 50 grand in debt. I can't do it. And 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 like those are the people who are gonna be more successful than I was because when I started, I didn't have that. Okay. I had a house, but before I got started, like I sold it. Like I had a nice cushion of money in, in the bank to like, it, like secure me in, in case like for a rainy day. Like I didn't have like the car payment like immediately. Like I didn't have all that stuff. I never even owned a credit card until um, recently. And, and P.S. Credit cards are good if you use them right. Game changers. Yeah, but like, bro, the people who have it the hardest when they're starting off, those are the people who are going to win the most in my opinion, because if you have all those hardships and you just don't give up, like, bro, you're going to be such a powerful person if you don't quit. <laughs> like, not only your mindset, but your skills and, and the way you do everything is just going to be 10 times better than, than what I'm even going to do. Like, that, like, that's not a setback. Like, it, in some ways, I guess it could be a setback. You have 50 grand in debt. But like, bro, if you can start and you go and start your own business and chase your passion and, and you have 50 grand in debt, like if you can get past that, if you can get past your own mind, right? You're going to be an infinitely powerful person. But uh, like I was going to ask you, I think you already said this, the, the E-Myth book there by Michael Gerber. We're going to plug that in the bottom because uh, I'm going to read that too. Uh, I'll plug it if it's good. Uh, I'll read it first. And if you guys see it in the description. Oh, it's, it's good, bro. I All right, we're going to go off his word. We're just going <laughs> to plug it down there in the description. Check that out. But like, uh, was that the book you would go with? Like I ask, I ask every entrepreneur, like, what's the book? What's the book? Ooh. Well, <clears throat> that's a tough question, man. I, I love reading. I, I absolutely love reading and <clears throat> ever, I'm going to plug two books for you because I think other than the E-Myth, there's two other books I think are kind of game changers. And ever, the first one would be the four hour work week, yep. you know, take it to an extent. You don't have to implement every single thing he says, like don't start your business off as a four hour work week, you know, put in the work, put in the grind. But once I read that book, <laughs> I read that before the E-Myth, by the way, it allowed, it opened up my mind to realize that in order to do what I really want, I need to have systems and processes and a team in place to be able to, you know, do those things. Because my, my biggest thing was, you know, I have, I have a pretty big personal brand. I also have this agency. Those yeah. are like my main two sources of income right now, which, you know, I love doing the agency, but I really love personal branding, putting content out there. We talked about this earlier. And the thing, my problem was, you know, whenever I would travel, you know, yeah, I'd make money from personal branding, but my agency would struggle. And that's after I read that book, I'm like, wow, like I need to figure out how I can, you know, still travel. Because if you follow me on Instagram, I travel all okay. the time. Like my life is literally. Yeah, traveling. that's where we met in, in yeah. Miami. Yeah, I followed you yeah, for a yeah, while we, before yeah, that. We met in Miami. I, I met you, yeah. Yeah, the 10X conference. That was that was awesome, by the way. If you guys have never been, definitely I better see you all there next year. Well, actually, this year it's in yeah. Vegas. So and, if you are there and you see me, definitely come up yeah. and say hi. But um yeah, and real. Anyways, going back on that, dude, it was it was an eye-opening for me because I was like, 
shit, dude, I got to figure out a way that my agency isn't going to, my agency will continue leveling up even when I'm doing the things I love to do. So the four hour work week is kind of what changed my mind into realizing that I need to hire more. I need to create SOPs. I need to, you know, have a team in place that will continue to work. Like as I'm on this call right now, I have three employees that are in the background doing work for me, growing my agency as well as doing now we're teaching them to do stuff for my personal brand, like little tiny, small details. Yep. But that would be one of the books. The other book that absolutely changed my life is, and if you haven't read this, you know, I, I'm sure you have, because I saw you at Grant's Grant Cardone's event yeah. it would be 10 X. I mean, it's, yeah. it's the book I read after I graduated college and it completely rewired my brain yep. all for the better. It made me realize that the people I was hanging out with, aren't going to take me to the next level and that I needed to surround myself, my environment and my time and whatever I do with the right people. And, you know, I I always like to reread that book to kind of brush up on my brain. I've read it like over 10 times already, but it's just one of those books where if you haven't read it yet, it's a must absolute must read right now. Right. Like you're a sum of the five closest people in your group. Doesn't necessarily mean friends can be family, whatever strangers like if you're if you're hanging around the closest five people to you right you're the sixth person you're going to become become a sum of that person right so if you're going to hang around five millionaires right you're going to be the sixth if you're going to hang around five people who have a really strong mindset you're going to be the sixth and and the other parts of that book there with the 10x rule is an awesome book i agree um a grant cardone is is the 10x rule is you set a goal so a lot of people set goals in terms of money and, and that's fine. But if you want to make a million dollars a year, that doesn't mean you do like what it takes to make a million dollars a year. If you, whatever you think it takes to do to make a million dollars a year, do 10 times that work. So if your goal is to make 1 million, your work ethic needs to match 10 million, right? Otherwise you're not going to get to that 1 million. And what usually happens is you're not going to hit the goal of 10 million. You're probably going to hit above it. That's what happens, or I'm sorry, of, of the million, right? You're not going to hit your goal of a million. You're going to hit way above it. And the 10X, uh, the 10X principle there by Grant Cardone, that is a great book. I read that on a plane out to Vegas uh, like a year and a half ago. Um, all of Grant's books really are, are pretty good. Seller Be Sold. Um, be Grant's the man, or dude. Uncle G. <laughs> you know, the guy's good. Um, guy's good. But like another thing I learned from, and actually from Brad Lee, uh, that actually, that same time where I was reading that book on, on that plane, the 10 X book, I was flying out to Vegas. I got to meet with Brad Lee over in his office there because um, he's, he's stationed out there in, in uh, uh, Vegas. I went and met with him with, with a couple friends. And uh, like one of the things the guy taught me about like going to these conferences and these networking events and stuff. Uh, and, and he's the entire reason why I went to the 10 X event in the first place where we met. Uh, he told me, he's like, dude, you go to these events to network. Like, I guess I never realized it at the time, but like, he's like, you don't even go, you don't go there to learn. He's like, you can learn all this stuff, 99% of the stuff online. Like you're paying $500 a ticket to network with high end people because the people who are actually buying these tickets, right? You're not going to get just average random people walking in off the streets, buying tickets for 500 bucks. Like you're going to be in the same room as valuable people. And those are the ones you want to network with. And it kind of clicked. I'm like, dude, that's insane. I can spend $500 on a ticket and get to sit in the same room with like really high end people and and, and actually talk to them and engage with them. Like, bro, that's infinitely valuable. And I love what they're doing this upcoming year. They're actually cutting the conference um, by 66%. Like it's going to be a third of the size of what it was last year. Or technically, it would have been this year. It was what was it, like 32,000, 33, something like that. It was ridiculous this year. But going off that, dude, yeah. yeah, always, always overspend when you're going to networking events. You know, I, when I first bought my ticket, I bought it like right when it came on sale. It was like a $100 ticket. And I would have been in the nosebleeds, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and like my, 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 my roommate and one of my other friends was like, dude, I am not seeing the nosebleeds. Are you? I was like, no, hell no. And it, it clicked. I was like, I'm not going to sit up there. I'd much rather yeah. buy the most expect. I was, I bought the VIP ticket. It wasn't yep. the most expensive. I think the most expensive was like 15 or 25 K, but the VIP ticket was a couple grand. And for me, I never, I've never bought a ticket for a show for that price. So I, I was kind of second guessing at first, but after I went to 10 X 
And, you know, I was sitting around only people in the VIP, you know, everybody else was up in the nosebleeds. Yeah. You know, not dissing you guys, but kind of really a little bit no, like, because right. I was down there with like people that I used to look up to for a while, you know, like yeah. Jason Stone, millionaire mentor. I was sitting there having a conversation with him and his, um, his wife, just, you know, chilling, talking with him, got some pictures with them, yeah. hanging out with like, you know, literally top dogs. You know, we, we met at yeah. the 10X event. Even. I seen you so talking like with Elena Cardone. Always, always, always overpay. Yeah. I seen you talking with Elena Cardone. You got some pictures with her, like Grant's wife, the guy hosting yeah. the biggest event in history, biggest business conference in history. Like, like, dude, that's, you're, you're right. Like, you got to overspend on those things, man. Like, I wasn't in a position where I could overspend to the point where I could spend 25 grand on C. But if you can do that, think of the people you're going to get to network with, right? Again, that cliche saying is, is, is your net, your net worth is, your network is your net worth, right? Like, in a way, like, I guess that's true because I would value, but the people I know and the information I have and the people I have access to is more valuable than money. But like when you, when you spend 25 grand on a ticket, you're going to be talking to some people who like you're never going to be able to talk to again in your life unless you buy that ticket, right? You're going to be talking to people who are not just seven figure earners, not eight figure earners, nine figure earners, right? So yeah, the, the, the top dogs, that's right, the, for sure. The people that are the top of their game there. But uh, what, what is that you got behind you? I'm, I'm going, going off our fake script again. Like what's that picture up there? It's an American Express black, right? Oh. right? No limits. I freaking love that. No limits, baby. That's <laughs> what life's about. No fucking limits. No limits. Charge card, right? Um, we were talking yeah. a little bit. We were talking big <laughs> on that too. Like I know that's something we both do. Like, dude, I made so much extra money in my agency just from using credit cards. Like the cash back you get on them is just stupid if you play the game right. Like credit cards are bad if you use them for liabilities. They're good if you use them for assets. Right. I, I yeah, I, I'm with you, dude. The people that say credit cards are bad are just ignorant. Let's just be honest. There's if you are smart, if you are like, if you don't understand credit cards, take some time to fucking understand them because we live in 2019 and credit cards are an absolute game changer. There's like, I wouldn't be able to do half the stuff I do if I didn't have credit. Yeah. And it's it's only building it's only building more and more and more that helps you out in the long run and. That's the thing where like with school, all these systems, they don't teach you any of this stuff, which is mind blowing because it's the most important things ever. I mean, we could go on a whole nother subject or a whole nother rant off credit cards just because <laughs> those things are absolute game changers. But my main thing is if you are watching this, listening to this, first off, I appreciate you. Yep. Second off, go get some credit, get your credit right. Do some research on it. Get your numbers up because your life will change once you understand how to use credit yeah, bro, the right it's way. Easy, like you don't even have to wait five years to get your credit fixed and get your credit right. Like you can get it done within the next reporting day, which is usually no longer than thirty days or forty-five days or whatever for you. Like literally, just go get a trade line. Go and buy access to an authorized user. TradelineSupply.com. Like I think I've linked this in the past. Like I'll have a link down in the description there. Like you can buy access to a trade line. And then you you get put on that person's credit, right? Usually they're like donor cards, so people aren't using them, so you don't got to worry about things going south. But like if somebody has a credit card with ten years age and like fifty thousand dollar limits, and you buy access to it for like five hundred bucks, like you acquire all that credit to your report when you get added on as an authorized user. So I mean, you just spend a couple hundred dollars, get put on one of them cards, dude, and it's just it's just stupid. <laughs> like I did that. And then I went and applied for like my, it boosted my credit by over a hundred points or whatever. And then like, I went and got like a bunch more credit cards, not necessarily to use, but just to like have those trade lines. Cause if I want to go to like the bank or whatever and get a, get a, get a loan or get access to an interest only loan for like a real estate property. Um, like I would have access to that because I already have that credit on my report. Right. Right. It's showing that like, oh, he already has access to this, access to this credit. He can be trusted by other lenders to use this amount so we can already trust him for this, right? He's already got access to this much money. If he wants to use it. So like, dude, it doesn't take long to blow up your credit at all. Like if you want your credit to be A1, not necessarily 850, but like maybe we'll call it A, A2, A minus. If you want it to be like an 800 or whatever within the next 30 days or 60 days or whatever, like Go get yourself a trade line. Go and apply for some credit cards. Don't buy stupid shit with them. And then just keep keep like giving yourself access to these large amounts of money. 
it's that simple. Like you don't have to wait five years. And, and credit cards are big because that's another way that I made a lot of money with 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 my marketing agency. Right? People would give me ad spend, and then I would put my credit card on file. Like I would charge them for it upfront, and then I would get three x or four x points back depending on the card I would use. And I would make money just from spending their money on Facebook. I did the yeah. same exact thing yeah. for my e-com businesses. Like by by May of this year, which is 2019 right now, uh, I think it's about 4,500 to 5,000, somewhere in that range when you actually look at the cash value. Uh, what I've made on points are alone. Like I've literally made like five grand this year already just from using a credit card to pay for my ad spend. Yeah, and I use mine a lot just to travel. So like anyone that's watching this or listening, like you can use, you can figure out if you want cash back, go cash back. If you want to use it for travel and travel the world, more power to you. I mean, the simple matter of the fact is just get started. There's no reason. I mean, if you have a bad credit score, figure out a way. Like there's there's a lot of experts in the field. <laughs> yeah. Go figure out a way to get it better. You know, simple matter of fact, just go get your credit right. No, exactly. But like credit's so important. Cash is king, but credit's power, right? Like all these massive guys out there and like, we'll take the real estate space um, because we were talking about that a little bit there, but like people who are buying these massive apartment complexes, they're not buying it with cash. They're buying it with interest only loans. So they're borrowing the money and they're only paying um, the interest on the loan. They're not paying the principal, right? And the only reason they're able to do that is because they have access to the money. So they, they get into like a contract for a couple of years Right, they only pay the interest on it, and then the, the loan will balloon, and then they're like have to pay it off or whatever. But what they do instead is they'll just go and get another interest only loan, and then they'll build up a big portfolio, big, big, big fund there, right? And then they'll sell it off to like Wall Street. And and like that's how people are becoming billionaires. That's how I'm going to become a billionaire, uh, when the economy crashes in the next two years, like when when the housing market crashes in the next two to three years, I'm calling it right here, right now, when the housing market crashes again. And there's a, a big demand to sell, and but there's not a demand to buy, so the price is going to be cheap. Like that's when I'm going to buy some massive stuff because I already have access to some stupid trade lines right now, which is very easy to do. Anybody can do it, um, and I know what's coming, so I'm planning for that. That's how I'm going to become a billionaire. Millionaires are made in good Plan economies. For the future. Millionaires are made in good economies. Billionaires are made in bad economies. Right. So. Um, I agree, dude. Like, that's good. I, I forget where we're going here with this, but like, uh, yeah, credit's important. And and you, I see you Jeez, use that man. platinum card all the time. That's a good one to have right there for travel. Like, dude, we're, we're taking advantage of those lounges, bro. Before the flight, we'll go in the airport. Cause I travel a lot myself. I don't post about it as much as you, but like, uh, we'll go, we'll chill in the lounge, dude. We'll drink a mimosa, you know, eat a free breakfast, just chill before our flight, dude. It's fun. And it's all because we got access to these credit cards. And that's just compliment perks of them. Like, bro, it's, it's, it's insane. The stuff you can do with credit cards for free, aside from just having access to large amounts of money. Like you live like a kid. Yeah, dude, it's, it's an absolute game changer. Right. But you did Shopify there for a while, right? You said? Yeah. Yeah. I used to build up stores to uh 20k and then sell them anywhere from like three to 5k. It was kind of a nice little side income, but I kind of got burnt out. Burnt out with it. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I'm, what I'm doing is I build them up. I've kind of took a little step back so I could like record this show and like do a lot more content and stuff. Cause I, I want to build a personal brand rather than a business brand. Like I've been doing. And uh, like, that's kind of what I would do. I would build them up to uh, pretty much whatever it took within two months. So usually I would build them up to about 150,000. Let's keep it a conservative number about $150,000 in revenue and just turn around and sell them off. So I've been selling stores like crazy. Like people, there's such a demand for it. And, and like when you're selling oh, yeah. the stores, bro, like people are buying like access to the store so they can get like the product or whatever that's selling good. Pretty much what they're buying, bro, it's 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 the data. Like 2019 is the biggest data race in history. I mean, if you look at Facebook, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, like it's an it's it's a data race. Like if you have the most yeah, data, you I win. can see it, dude. <laughs> if you have the most data, you win. So when people are buying these stores from us. They're buying a customer list. They're buying an email list, right? Phone list. They're buying your pixel data because data is just so much more valuable than actual money. Like, it's just, just the facts about it. Like, look why Facebook got sued. 
Data is king, my friend. King. Hey, I don't mean to cut you off, dude, because oh, I good. love talking to you on here. But I got a sales call in three minutes. So any last minute questions or anything? No, you no, no. Plug, catch, that bag. Get it. catch that bag. We are just rolling up on 45 minutes, which is the average attention span for podcasters to listen to shows like this. So I was going to cut us off anyway, right around here. So this works out perfectly. Perfect. Man. Um, awesome. Catch that bag. I know you had a call earlier and you're I guess regularly having calls, bro. Um, I wish you all the success in the world, man. Uh, I guess if I had to have any other questions here, uh, the only thing I would probably ask is maybe for one pro tip, uh, not for, well, maybe for me too, but like for the listeners, man, like what is one pro tip that you can give somebody um, really about anything, whether it's mindset, Facebook ads, um, starting entrepreneurship, uh, your business, like niche specific, whatever, one pro tip. That's all we're asking. One pro tip, man, there's so many pro tips I want to throw out there. <laughs> I would say, and Gary V talks about it a lot is, you know, document your journey. That's the, the way that this direction, this world is going in, especially right now in 2019, whenever you're listening to this, it's 2019 right now. Yeah. And it's never been a better time to build a personal brand. And you, we talked about this earlier on this call is now is the time. If you're not, if you don't have a big brand or anything, just document everything you're doing. That's what I started doing. And, you know, trust me when I say this, you will have people that follow and listen to you. I, that's the main thing that I always thought about was like, dude, nobody wants to listen to me. Like, why, why would they care? And yep. it's all it is is just getting started doing it. And eventually you'll build that following and just keep growing and growing. You, you can, you can start making money off of it. Because yep. especially going in this future, dude, like your personal brand is going to be who you are. And obviously, it's who you are, but it's going to be a great revenue stream moving forward. Yeah, CPMs, you get paid per, pretty much CPM stands for like per thousand viewers. And you can just make stupid amounts of money. Like that's how influencers are making money. Like they'll put out ads or they'll affiliate with other places. But like going back to what you're saying there, yes, document your journey, build your brand. Right. That's something I really lacked on right there. But the reason I'm starting right now when I'm so far in already is because the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is right now. OK, so don't look for the next social media to start. Like, don't look for the next big thing. Look for what's actually working right now and take action on that. Because the best time to plant a tree, like I said, was 20 years ago. And the next best time is right now. Guys, Justin's contact stuff. Not his phone number, not his email, but his IG, his Facebook, his business, everything right down there is in the description. Make sure to contact this guy here. Uh, follow his content. Look at what he's posting because it's real good stuff. Um, give him a follow. Send him a message. Um, like just connect with him. Like go join his Facebook group. Uh, what is it, SMMA University? Like it's good quality yes, stuff. Sir. Dude, he's blowing up quick within the teaching space uh, when it comes to social media marketing it's for a reason it's not by chance it's not luck it's because what he does is real and what he does works so go shoot over there give the guy a follow check out his content like this is a real player in the game here guys um but anyways justin i know you got to get running here man i really appreciate you coming on the show here today um i got some stuff here we, we should connect on in um, the near future but uh again thanks for coming on the show man i really really appreciate you coming on Absolutely, man. Let's talk soon. All right, bro. Good talk, though. Thanks for coming. Yep. All right. Later, brother. Thanks for watching the show, guys. Honestly, I really appreciate all the feedback I've been getting. If you haven't been giving me any feedback, it really, really helps me. It shows the search engines that people are actually engaging with my content. So if you did like what I had to say today, um, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up and a like. If you didn't like what I had to say today, give me a big thumbs down or a dislike because either way, honestly, it helps the show out. It shows the search engines, like I said, that people are engaging with our content. And furthermore, if you really like what we have to say, uh, just make sure to subscribe here to the show. Subscribe to it, engage with the content, leave a, leave a comment, leave a like, share it with somebody else. Help us get the message out there, guys. This is a completely free show. I don't charge for any of my content. So all the help I can get, I really, really appreciate it. But make sure you stay tuned, guys, because next week's episode may be even better than this week's episode. So make sure you check it out. I record these in advance, so I definitely know that uh, every single week, 
uh, what's, what's going to be coming, what's not going to be coming. But make sure you check this one out because next week's episode is really, really good, guys. I have some really good points to get in, in there. And I got a really special guest on there that you're probably not expecting. So make sure to go over and check that show out because I promise you, you're going to pull some insane keys out of that one, guys. But until then, we'll see you next time.